so welcome to Bunny's Designs. This is a live stream with a live peoples on a Thursday morning in the UK and we have a, quite a bright day even though I think we're going to have the tail end of the hurricane popping in by the weekend. <coughs> it doesn't look such a bad day out there but we do have road works directly outside my window. <laughs> so it could be it could get a little bit noisy when wagons set off so um hopefully alf is asleep under the desk and we have a new la lady called betsy doodles betsy hi betsy so this is betty doodles and it doesn't look like she's only got a head but there is a big body behind my monitor and she does like her dreamies she make them out and say hi so this is our new girl and she does like her food but she's quite timid so she's found a little space she's been here three days on the on my desk three nights this is her first full day on here so we'll see how she gets on but she does like her food we come for eat don't we Betsy Doodles so this is Betty Doodles our new girl Oh, hi, Kingo. Welcome to Bunny's Designs. Anybody else popping in? We're just having our first hello with Betsy Doodles, who is a bit of a dreamy girl. She just like her dreamies. She's beautiful. She's a very clever girl. And this little girl was found with her kittens. And she'd lost all her kittens, but she refused to leave them. She was snuggled with them, so she's a bit traumatised and... And she's been frightened, so she's a bit of a bit of a timid girl. But she just like her ears played with. So she's coming out of her shell a little bit. Yes, yeah, she's beautiful. She's got some little white socks that we didn't even know she had. But she just she's but she likes her dreamies. like your dream is it's here she will not take them out of your hand though she won't take them out of your hand no she will not you have to put it down but she's getting better every day she's getting a bit better and she's just a beautiful little girl You've had quite a few of these now, Miss. That's enough for today. Thank you. I've got some ordinary cat biscuits. She knows the difference with ordinary cat biscuits. And she says, nope, don't like those. I want dreamies. These are cat biscuits. And she's had her other oh, finished it off. You've got a little bit there. You're not going to have that. Okay, then. So... Betsy Doodles. Oh, she's standing up. That's a new thing. Good girl. So she's our new mascot. <coughs> she's just looking at me going, why have you stopped stroking me? Betsy. Hello, darling. Hello, Betty Doodles. Hello, Betsy. So she did have a really nice blanket, but my daughter's read that if she gets stressed, she's got an old jumper of Samantha that smells of Samantha. She was a bit of a miser miserable girl when she was in the pen, so we decided she might need to be. She might need to be one to one. So we thought that would be quite good because she could sit here and listen to me droning on. And she does like her ears played with, don't you? But we can't do this all day for hours. So, back to where we... <laughs> <coughs> oh, excuse me. So, if you hear anything, you know it's our Betty. And she's just winked at me, so that's a good sign. So, what I thought I would do is... When I put my watercolour pencils into my book of watercolours, I made some bigger squares. Um, and I, I didn't 
finish this one off because it was hurting my hands. So I finished this one off. And that's two layers and that's th three layers. And it's the third layer that gives you a really solid block of colour. <clears throat> so I made bigger squares because they were this size and I decided I needed bigger squares. But because I'd got a bit carried away and taken quite a lot of wood off, I snapped a couple. So, but these are very old. <clears throat> I don't think the new ones snap. And, and you'll have to forgive me, but I've woken up with a cold, so unfortunately. So, a quick slurp of tea. And I might have to have a lot of those today because so I've been up most of the evening, most of the night, so <clears throat> a bit frazzled around the edges today. Um, so I thought I'd show how I sharpen. Now this is a little sharpening guard. It has little rubber strips, so it stops it moving about. Um, and you can do it on a piece of paper or you can do it on just newspaper. And the idea is that you slice not you're digging in you're slicing across so you can use a craft knife um, I use these scalpel blades and if you hold it and push it doesn't matter where it's going to go it's not going to cut you never ever do it this way always do it away and this little guard stops when you're sharpening it has a stopper um, so that's quite nice and the little kind of holder allows you to twist it round. Now, most of the pencils are round, but these are quite old. So I think these are hexagonal or octagonal, but most of them are kind of. So what I do is I do, I start where this V is. And I take off. Let's say there are one or two lorries outside. And I kind of do little slithers because I don't want too much. But I like. I like quite a lot because I don't have to want to do this too many times. But because my pencils have been dropped and thrown about and thrown in pencil cases before I realised that they really needed to be um, in a Derwin art bag, which they're in now, sitting here. Oopsie. Um, now I do have a couple of rules. One of them is. I normally don't do anything else if I've got the knife in my hand. If I want to move something, I'll put the knife down and then I'll do that. And then that means that you're not accidentally going to do this. So, and always work away from yourself. Now, sometimes I push it with my finger if I want to be very precise. And just pinch off that little bit there. Now this that's quite a big um there's a little bit there that wants to come off. I don't think I can get it to refocus, but there is a little bit there. So you can just take it as even as possible. And that's gonna give you quite a nice now. <clears throat> there isn't a point and I've just taken off wood the strip of color in the middle hasn't been touched or hardly touched now you could scrape this to a point and you would just kind of keep going and turning and turning and it would go to a beautiful point and you want to catch that water in a little well a water pot or a water well or a watercolor palette and if you add quite a lot of water, you'll get a wash, a watercolour wash. But I've got quite a sharp kind of point on there. And also a flat facet there. So if I want to do my colouring in my book, I'm not going to get any lines. But if I want a line, I can turn it to where there's a sharp bit. And when that wears down, another sharp 
bit will keep so there's always some kind of sharp bit there to get a really nice line if that's what you want now mine are really old so they're and I can keep I can always turn them so that I can read what they are I mean quite something to me these now some of the other ones don't um, I, I normally look at the colours for the pastels, but the watercolour pencils and the ink tents, I do look at the names because I've got them in here for my colour gu guide. And I'll choose the colour and I'll know what it's called and I'll know its number. And so that's what I look for. Now the watercolour pencils, I think, are still in order. For seven, two, which is they are. Although I know they have changed some of the numbers. And I think now, originally these were silver. Um, and then in the 80s, I think they went this colour. And I think now they are purple. If you buy them now, it will say watercolour pencil, but it'll be purple. Now, if you look at this one, this is a real old one. And some of these were in a smaller set and some were in a different set. But if you look at this one, you see that there is a little slit here. And let's have a look at the other side. Yes. And you can actually see on here, you can see there's a little ridge all the way, tiny little ridge all the way down that side and all the way down that side. There's just that little tiny line. But here we can see Basically, you have a strip of colour, and then you have two pen, two pieces of wood that has a groove, a circle groove cut out of it, and then it, it traps, that's how they make the pencil. It traps, and it's got glue on it, and then it's held together, and the edges are cut, and they cut each individual pencil, and then they, they sharpen them. And that's how they make them. Uh, There's some really good photographs and and YouTube videos of how they make the pencils. Now this one, because it's old, it's not particularly split, but you can see exactly how it's made. Uh, but mine are very old, and as I say, they have been dropped and kicking about pencil cases, um, which they shouldn't have been really. So these are a little bit probably more delicate than the new ones that you buy today. Um, I'm older and wiser now. Um, and I wonder if this one is the blue. Oh, this is Kingfisher Blue. Now, I've used this quite a lot because it's a real favourite of mine. Um, and I would have liked a another set of these, but you know these are going to keep me going and you have to ask yourself, do you really want to spend on another set? So they might be slightly different because obviously over the years, the Derwent Pencil Company has changed things slightly like all sorts of other companies. They have better products and they have better ways to do things. Oh, hi, Melody. Welcome to Bunny's Designs. It's like 38. May as well do this one as well. And as I say, the strip is there, but I want to just take off a little bit more. <clears throat> and unfortunately, my hand's not very good. I was hoping it's the winter. But... Hopefully... My hands do not work well, but I do need to do, I think there's one or two. If I'm going to use them today, I don't want to be stopping to sharpen. So we have Alfie under the desk. And we have, I use sap green a lot, and you can tell because it's, uh, <laughs> and this one is one of the original ones. This one, it's, it's, it's very old is this one. I don't think it's quite as old as I am, but it's old. So it's. Uh, but I, say, I think now when you buy them, it's purple. 
the whole pencils are the same colour. And again, um, I must have bought these in the 80s, and you can see it's a different wood. This is more like a kind of a rosy wood, and the woods are different. You can tell when you're, when you're sharpening. Um, because of forest um, preservation, people have changed how they make things and, and what kind of wood they use. And you can tell this. You know, this is obviously curling like like really, really good wood. But things would be different. So that was 49. So I don't know why 49 is there. Because... They seem to be all out of sync for some reason. And some have split. But these are really old. And I wouldn't think... And you can tell that the paint is thinner as well. It's never chipped off, but you can tell it is a bit, a little bit thinner. So I say mine have been kicking about a bit, and they've split a little bit here. But it doesn't do anything to the pencil. Um, that should be forty-five in there. So I don't know where forty-five is. That one wants sharpening. But these are going to last me a long time. <coughs> So I have so I just think I don't know why I've yeah, but I have so I do like the order because they're in the same order as they are in that that book, so it makes it a bit easier. See this is this will dissolve it's pure colour is that so I'm keeping it because it will dissolve into a watercolour. And I may not remember what actual colour it is, but I know that eventually um, I'm just gonna pop that one back in there. Forty five want sharpening as well, so this is turning into quite a job. <laughs> I mean, I don't always not touch the strip. It would have been interesting to compare these to the the newer ones, but. It would be probably a waste of pennies, so we'd better not. So 45 is going in there. <coughs> and Prussian blue. So this is probably a job to do outside when it's nice weather, or to do in front of the TV on a tray, so you're not making a mess. Now, I wouldn't be probably able to sharpen these in a pencil sharpener because the strips are quite old now. Um, and I wouldn't really want to because it's something that I've never done. So it's always what you're used to. Now, I know pencil sharpeners have come a long way and they're a lot better, but... Um, the first time I went to art college, I was taught this way, and it's just something that's kind of stuck. Um, in the 80s, if you went to art college, this is how you were taught, 79. Um, and we, we were taught on our curriculum to buy... It said a scalpel with scalpel blades, so, you know, we've been using these since I was 16, just short of 17, so, oopsie, I've been using them a long time, but I can still cut myself if I don't use extreme care. And you can't sharpen pencils if you're in a bad mood. So, I've got some really nice paper there. So they're okay. I'll flip them over. Um, I don't use white so I'm not really going to bother with white. Um, 
don't really think I need anything off these really, but we'll just take a little bit. I think if I taught my children to do this, who are 17 and 19, they've been using a blade for a long time. But I think they don't normally do them quite as wide, bit bad as I do. So I think if I get them to do this for me, by the time they've done 72, they will be expert at it. Now I am actually shaving off a little bit of colour there, but be a bit careful. And I do like these, as I say, they go from pales to darks. So if anybody's got any questions, pop them in caps. I hope everybody's okay. Does everybody see Betsy Doodles? <laughs> Our new baby. Who's decided that she just wants to curl up behind the desk. So this is the first time that I do that. We just brought her down at night time because she wants to stay at night and she wakes my daughter up and she, my daughter's got college so, so she's here and Alfie's a little bit slow bless him as we know Alfie the King Charles so he doesn't know she's here he has no idea he has met her once and she kind of hissed at him and he looked and thought okay there's another cat um but I think he's getting the idea. I think he's I think he's finally settling after all these time. But again, the, when animals have been kind of not necessarily mistreated, but not had the best start, they're kind of always a bit odd. Um, and you don't always have good results very quickly. Um, the other two, the lurcher, and the little terrier boss have had four of years. And they're still naughty, so. <laughs> so this is a little bit of a boring thing, but at least you can see in real time so you know how long it's gonna take you. And I think I've broken this one quite a lot and down. This one is Pink Madder Lake, number 17, and I quite like this one. But bearing in mind since I've had these quite a long time now this one I think has actually <clears throat> which again proves that you don't have to throw them away I think the strip has come away from this one uh, you know but some pencils last a long time and as I say unfortunately I wasn't good with these when I had them first they were straight out of the tin and straight in a pencil case so, if I'd have had my little Derwent art bag, they would have gone in there. You see how dry the wood is? It's, it's squeaking. <laughs> but if you just go gently and... You might be able to see that on this side, I think... As I say, these are really old. Not quite. It hasn't quite left left it, but and I do like them in order because it just makes it easier when you're looking for something. It's just it just always makes it a little bit easier. And that's 15, so 16 would go there. And I don't know where 16 is, so that's a bit scary. 22 and 23. So we've gone to our reds, our pinks, our reds. <coughs> um, and then we've gone to purple. So again, that's quite nice. Oops, the little paw. Little Betsy loves her feet out. Oops, sorry, miss. 
feet out. I've I've just disturbed. She loves to have her feet straight out. So welcome everybody to Bunny's Designs. This is a live stream with live people. It's recorded for Ustream.tv and also for YouTube for people to watch at their leisure. And um, if you like the videos or if you have any requests, please like and subscribe and tell me what you like about them and also tell me what you don't like about them. Just recently I've had a couple that... And I know it shouldn't bother me, but it does. Um, just ticking that they didn't like the video, and I, but not say why. Well, I can't rectify it. Um, and I'd noticed one or two do that in the first minute. So some of these videos are about an hour and a half long. So maybe that's the problem. They are long. So it would be kind and it would be constructive criticism to tell me what it was to make now I can't always but sometimes I can so that was my whinge I've got that out of the way <laughs> uh, so thank you to all the people that that like my videos and enjoy watching but again you know if there's anything you want to see again or anything I've missed because I'd realised I said I was going to buy another set of this. And then I make other videos and we buy other books. And before we know it, we've forgotten half the things or I have I was going to do. So again, if I say I'm going to do something and you want to see it and I forget, please remind me. I do have short-term memory loss. So um, I'm a bit of okay. So we've got some decent... Um, oh, there's a deep familiar in there. It does hurt my hands a little bit, but as I say, I think it's our British weather at the moment that's a bit pants, so I'm probably taking off a bit more than I should here. To speed things up a little bit, but the idea is that you take your time and then you don't waste any colour. All that strip is pure pigment. That's why they're expensive, because of what's in between these pieces of wood. So you want to preserve all that, because all that's good colour. Especially the Derwent pens, they are really, really, really fantastic. These watercolour pencils, I always go on about them, are so underrated. They really are. They have fantastic colour, they have fantastic light fastness, they are a watercolour. Um, I have a really old video from the early 80s, maybe 90s, that was about um, David Cook, a wildlife artist, who I think now lives in America, who used to use them. He was a demonstrator for Rexel, who used to own the Derwent Company uh, quite a few years ago now. But it's a really good video and it proves you can do the finest detail on a watercolour paper with the pencils. Now, I don't do this anymore. I just do colour pages because my artistic days are over. I cannot do watercolours or oils. I can just play about with a little bit of colour to keep myself occupied which is what it's all about so i think that one is 48 oh, so 48 goes to the bottom and 54 for some reason it's to be there so let's have a bit of a And again, if you get these out of sync, sometimes you just need to play about with them to get them back because it's nice to have them in order because they're just easier to use in order. And you know you're working from dark to light. Now, I normally take out the black out, but I leave it there because it's, it just happens to be there. 52 doesn't want to be there. 
66 is chocolates of course that's quite a good one we want um gunmetal wants put in there so we'll do that one next so apologies for this this is <laughs> oh thank you bob yeah i know i just do i just do it's just me i'm miss oversensitive <laughs> But again, I don't, you know, if somebody wants to see something and I'm not doing it, that, that that's, I need to know because I can make that better. So that's better for everybody. So as I said, I just go around clicking buttons and I have to learn, oops, I have to learn. That's gunmetal. That's a gorgeous colour, is that, for doing um, metals. And there's quite some quite nice greys and again I always go on about 72 60 to 72 colors are really good because um, you can get away with six but again I'm poorly now I can't color mix so you know it's not fair for me to say you just buy six colors excuse me <clears throat> so what we could do is you want to look at a set of colors look at what you color if you color flowers then you're going to obviously want greens and you want blues and yellows as well but you want a couple of purpley blues you want a couple of uh, blue we um, cold blues a couple of purple blues warm blues and then you want um, a couple of the teal colors the, the bluey greens I think this set's got a bluey green and a, and a greenish blue or something. So again, that's quite nice. So about four or five different blues. And then that's going to be able to mix these pencils. You can mix as many watercolours of these together and you will never get mud. That's another thing that David Cook showed you on the video. You can scratch as many colours as you want with these. And I did that. And on one of the managed to um, which one was it? I think it was Imagimorphia with the the pineapples. No, it was Imagimorphia. I always pick the wrong one. And I scratch 16 colours together. Now, normally, if you put 16 watercolours together, you get mud. But here, there were two or three yellows, there were two or three greens, and there was a couple of blues, and there was a couple of browns, and a purple. Um, and in that small space. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Bob said, oh, thank you. That's explained it to me. Um, I don't always see that. So, this one, um, most of these have got one colour, but these particular fronts, I wanted to match up the colour exactly. So, this is Ink Tense Pencils, but this is Derwent Watercolour Pencils. So, if you only wanted one set of pencils, these are still quite bright. Oh, sorry, I've just touched her toe. As I said, she does like her toes out. <laughs> she likes her feet out. So here, these pencils will blend as a pencil. They will blend as a watercolour. But if you use them quite strong, there isn't much difference between the ink tents. Now, there is a difference because ink tents are intense but you know if you only could have one set of pencils the Derwent watercolor pencils are really fabulous they're fantastic um, and you can get really really vivid colors and again I scratched there's a couple of blues there's a couple of greens there a couple of browns uh, I think there's a couple of yellows and then another different green coming in here so you can scratch this little bit of color and i will do another another video like that because it's really really good 
It's a good technique. Oh, thank you, Jane. Thank you. It's a really good technique. And you're using a tablespoon of water, a damp rigger, and you get some wonderful watercolour effects. And getting a watercolour effect on a just a dead boring, although this is really good quality, paper is, is really difficult. You know, you, you, if you want to gesso it and faff about with it and change it, that's fine. But if you want to do it where there's no hair dryers and you can do it anywhere, you can scratch a bit of colour. And what I do now is I scratch colour, which I'm going to do in a minute, is I'm going to scratch colour. I'll do this in the next video. And then I'm going to leave it. I'm going to scratch all the colour. And instead of scratching a bit and 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 activating it with water and then scratching a bit more I'm going to scratch the whole page um, and I've done that with the Derwent ink 10 pencils on this first page of the uh, Hannah Carlson Magical Dawn and these books I've decided that instead of missing pages like I've done with all my others all the books I buy now I am going to do the first page and I'm going to turn over and I'm going to do the second page even though it's not kind of what I want to do. I'm going to do them in page order because I'm missing pages. And even if I did this, uh, like I'm going to do in Derwent Watercolour Pencils, I might make a bit of a pig's ear of it, but it's not my favourite page. But if I do this one, which I'm really looking forward to doing, that's a practice. So when I do this one, I'm going to be a lot better. I would have ironed out all my problems, found some nice colour combinations, found colours I didn't like, so I'm not going to use them. And this is how your book goes. And then you will see the beginning of the book is going to be a lot different to the end of your book. It's very much like when you have a sketchbook. Your first drawings in your sketchbook will, you will think, be pants. Um, but the last two in the book will be a million times better than the first two because you've got better and the same applies to colour books it applies to all art your first canvas you might hate your first watercolour you might hate you might not get water consistency right you might not get the colour consistency right you might not get the flow of water right you might not have the right brushes you might be on a slope you might want to be flat but by doing two or three by the time you get to about the fifth and sixth one you will have ironed out a lot of problems and the same goes with colour books. A new set of pencils, a new set of pens, a new set of crayons. The first few times you play with them, they are not going to be exact because you, you don't know what you're doing. Um, now, I've been going a long time, so I do have a little bit of an insight of what things are going to do. Um, but I was watching the video that I made um, and I, somebody made a comment about it uh, and I completely forgotten about it and I think it was this one and again I'd forgotten about these books um, actually it wasn't this one it was the other one but um, this one was the path because this paper is really thin so this book's got neglected and it's had something started on it and this is in pastel um, and it's been blended with a blending tool and then it's had a very very damp barely damp rigor just stroked across the top so as the old masters used to do you didn't have pa if you had pastels you didn't have watercolors they weren't rich a lot of them weren't they would use the pastels to make a watercolor wash so they could do a little practice again iron out the composition, iron out the colour, iron out what what went where, what colour went where, what doesn't go and then they would do a 6 foot by 20 foot one or they'd do a 10 foot by 10 foot one. If nearly all the old masters, nearly, I won't say always, they did a sketch or several sketches and they also did a small watercolour and a lot of them used to have small watercolours in their pocket and that's how the miniatures came about. They would do miniatures to show people how good they were. So there's always a way around doing things. So this one is not going to be, this is the first one. So by the time I came to, and I read backwards is, I thought I would ruin the page. So you wanted to use markers and you are going to destroy 
your color page that you're working from you could work backwards so if you wanted to use this as a reference you could do this one in whatever medium you liked if you were going to use acrylics or oils or very strong watercolors you'd want to gesso it with clear gesso and I make my clear gesso with white PVA glue and water and baby talcum powder because if it's good enough for baby's bottoms it's good enough for me and I have asthma but I put my hand over it and stir the pot until all of it's been dissolved and then I can mix it to the consistency that I want that works perfectly for color books it doesn't crinkle it doesn't distort them I don't know what bought ones do I don't know if it's light fast or if it's going to stay forever but that's what I use and I did it in a color book in the Harry Potter for acrylics um, quite a long time ago now nearly a year ago and the book's still fine so you could do that and then you could work backwards so you could use that as your reference color this in that's destroyed you could then turn the page and you could color this one in use that as your reference and the back of this would be destroyed but it's okay because you've already used it so there is always a way to do things so if you didn't want to go although I'm going forwards this one if I wanted to use markers I would go backwards because you unless you didn't want to get the exact colors obviously but that way and always put a piece of card between because lots of things go through especially these thinner pages uh, now technically these and these are watercolors it's quite a few books I have but they're not printed on watercolor paper but we can get this watercolor effect even though it's on thin paper we don't have to use watercolor in a traditional way um, now David Cook when he does this com entire um, picture of a I think it's a turn it's some kind of bird standing on one leg um, and he uses the pencil in a little dish in, a, in a, a watercolor palette and he makes a wash a blue wash and these just dissolve just like the neos just like ink tens the ink tens will dissolve in water but once it's dried it's set these isn't these will these will not move these will move because these are traditional watercolors but you can do a wash and then you can scratch color like here and get some really fine detail and you can build your page up if you're using watercolor pages paper but of course we're not we're using just ordinary paper um, and it's some of them best, slightly better quality than others but most of them you cannot use the traditional wash brush because it's just not viable to do that so I hope that wasn't as clear as mud so we've got a sort of 48 went at the end of that one no nope. So we've got 48, 49 and 50 because I used to be able to count. And then these greens I think should go down here. Yeah, 51. So that one's not so bad. Just take a little bit off. So um, I'll finish sharpening these and then I'm going to work in the Hannah Carlson colour book. And then I'll probably try to work in another book today one of the old books that I haven't been in for a while and again things get neglected so we want 42 that one's sharpening and I can't find 40, uh, 52 52 is there 52 doesn't need sharpening bit of a sad girl but I do like them all in order and some I've used more than others that sap green is really nice so um, raw umber just needs a little bit 
and again you can do all this at once or you can do them as you as you use them but obviously being on camera it's easy for me to do it all at once and then the next video is going to be all about colouring and not about sharpening so we've got 53 and again these are pales so we're going from greens to olives and then we're going browns so it's nice that it all flows very much like a palette it's a palette but it just happens to be a palette of pencils they are watercolor oops they are watercolor pencils they are which is a palette um and that's sometimes why i use them if i have a spare sleeve which i haven't at the back of this one if i'm doing a particular page and it's going to take a long time um, I will use a sleeve and put the pencils that I'm using because I've got such a bad memory um, or you can take a photograph of them and then you know that on that particular page these are the colours you've used so that's another way to do it and as I say you seem to have got out of sync so we could do with 55 and again that's a sharp so I've only got another half of a dozen to sharpen I think so sorry if it's a little bit of a boring video but you can see what it is in real time and how people keep things now lots of different artists keep different things in different places but I wish I'd had one of these Derwent art bags a long time ago because I think it keeps your pencils safe and the you can see everything almost at once um, in the art bag I have it opened you can see two sides and if I wasn't streaming live I would have these in front of me like this so I can see just like a watercolor palette all my colors just pick out what I want so I know that my cooler yellows are here um, actually it's normally the wrong way. it's normally the other way around it's normally that way around And then they go to reds and then I have the pinky reds and the purples at this end. So if I want a pinky red, I know to go here. If I want a cold red, an orange red, I go there. And I can do that a lot quicker. Whereas if you're fiddling around with pencils in a, in a tray or in a box or in a pencil case, even though it's a clear one, I've had a clear one, you don't see them. And you might miss a colour that would have been slightly better to use. Uh, because we can't all remember 72 colours just straight off, or I can't. So there's there's always a reason for doing different things. So that's 55. And then we've got 57, which is okay. And as you can see, they're different lengths, but these are really old. Um, but I haven't used them very much, so we've got... 57, 58, just do that nicely. Normally what I would do is just do this. Um, and again, you can see that that strip here, that's the line of the strip. And that's why it comes away probably a little bit easier than it would. So I'm getting distra distracted by the, the traffic. That's 58, and then we have a 50. 59 it's disappeared too. I lose pencils. Oops. And again, I love to see her little toes. Sorry, that's our new Betsy. Our Betty Doodles. Well, 59 has disappeared, but I'm sure it'll appear. It will appear. It goes there. So then we have 60 and 61. Oh, I know what I've done. That's what I'm doing. I always forget the end strip here, so that's why. I wondered why they weren't fitting in right. There is always a reason. So it's a little bit fiddly, but if you sharpen them all and put them all in here, 
they're easier to work. And that one's 65, which is fine. <clears throat> We've got 66, 67, and 68. So we have 64, and we have 62. And for some silly reason, we have one missing, but it'll turn up. Oh, there it is. That has to be 59. So all present and correct and all sharpened, I think. And at the back, because it's 72, um, I have my Derwent Graphi Tint. So in my art bag, I have my Swington's pencils which are water-based and I have my 72 watercolour pencils and I have a set of Derwent Graffy Tint and they're kind of a grungy pencil kind of tone so they're quite nice. Oh bye Jane, have a lovely, have a lovely day. Thank you for popping in. So, sorry about that, this bo boring video of how to sharpen pencils and put them in order. But I do like my little art bag. And again, I have to follow my rule and put the eraser back on, on there. And then, there is a little tiny bit of colour here, but most of it is pencil. And I'm quite happy about that, because it's a tight Yorkshire lass, I like to keep... And there's no, there isn't any dust, and I say if you've got asthma, you've got to be a bit careful. So if you were scraping the dust particles, you've got to be that little bit careful, especially with the, the pastel pencils. So now I have a little bundle that can just sit somewhere and then be put in the bin. So all my pencils, now I do ha actually have these in the wrong way because these go from white, pale, pale yellow, warm yellow, orangey yellow, orangey, orangey red, reds, pinky reds, pinks, and then we've got the pinks and the purples. And then I would normally go across here, because in the art bar, in the art, art bag, so what I've done is I've got this one turned over, and then we've got the purples, we've got the purpley blues, we've got the pale blues, the cold blues, the turquoisey greeny blues then we've got the greens the pale greens the olives the browns the fawns the greys and the blacks and I kind of like this way now normally this side is on the other way but because I've got these here it's worked out that I have these at this side and then at that side that's what we have so there seems to be one missing I think that's flesh colour if I I'm not mistaken. And again, the beautiful thing about this is that I can look in my little book really quickly under Derwent watercolour pencils, and and I can see that number sixteen, which is the one that's missing, is flesh pink. And it actually, wants replenishing, which is probably why I've taken it out. So I've got to find that, and then I can. Probably is on my little desk here. Oh, and I've forgotten to do something else as well. I had a wonderful surprise earlier. And I just thought I'd have a really quick look for this pencil. I think that's a Derwent one, but that's a funny coloured one. So can't find it just at this moment, but that's where it's going to go, um, and it is a really nice set, is this? <clears throat> so that's pencil shining and pencil safety, and also having them handy to you. So 
protected. They're not banging about. They're not going to break. Um, so I like I like to have those, and I do have so the, the ink tens with them, so I can pick up my little bag, and I've got my water-based pencils in there. I have another bag with uh, pastel pencils in, so I pick that bag up for the pastels, and I have another one that has um, my near color twos in. So it's uh, it, it's all it's all good fun keeping your things accessible easy to use safe but they need to be handy to use because these were in two beautiful wooden boxes but i can't open the boxes and i can't have the box on my desk so i wouldn't use them and that's why they weren't used for a long time so very very quickly i had the most wonderful surprise look what i've got and it's my birthday card from Dee Dee, but it's made by Zandra. Isn't that wonderful? And it says, advice from a sea turtle. And it says, swim with the current, be a good navigator, stay calm under pressure, be well travelled, age gracefully, and spend time at the beach. And I think that's just wonderful. And it's sparkly. So thank you so much, Dee Dee, for my wonderful surprise that made my day, that did. Isn't that such an amazing thing? Isn't that beautiful? So I will treasure that, and it's going on my little card. I have a little card from Dee Dee, one of her little, uh, little cards that she makes with her creations. And um, so... I'm going to find a special place in my new studio when it gets built. <laughs> so I want to put it quite safe. It's going back in its envelope, but I thought I have to say thank you. It was a wonderful surprise. So I'm going to end this video and we'll start another one all about don't watercolour pencils um, and scratching colour into Magical Dawn. So thank you for watching. Sorry guys, I can't get my little mouse to work. <laughs> I can't stop broadcasting. Oh, come on. Sorry, I just cannot get it to work.
uh, can't can't control anything. Um, Sorry, I cannot control this silly mouse. It won't let me do anything. Um, oh, garlic gumdrops. I'm just going to have to turn everything off at the mains. Apologies. I just don't know what else to do. It will not. It will not work. And the other mouse, the new mouse that they sent me doesn't work. So, um, I'll try this old battery, but I don't think it's going to do any good. So, sorry guys, no, I don't, I can't do anything with this. Um just gonna have to turn everything off so apologies I should be back in a little while it's just not helping me at all Sorry guys, I'm going to have to turn everything off.